Greetings. This is Anya again, and we're about to start a series of videos. Michael Holland and Daryl Stenville Wells are going to help me, and the first series are going to focus on a group of plants that are really wonderful in the mint family, Lemiaceae. So here we go. Michael Holland has written a book called I Eat Sunshine for Breakfast, all about plants and some wonderful activities that you can do with growing plants. And there's a particular page in here that I'd like to share with you that relates to the mint family. This page is all about the groups of plants that are closely related to each other. Just like human families, they all belong together. And one in particular we're going to really look at today, which is this family. It's the mint family. Let me read you a little bit about this family. The mint family, Lemiaceae, has mint, basil, rosemary, thyme, lemon balm, marjoram, organo, lavender, and others. You can hear that these are all herbs and they're fun to grow and they're really great to include in your cooking. So let's learn some about the mint family. And Michael, um, I have just gotten fascinated with plants in the mint family. So I was just wondering if you could share with us a little bit about what makes a plant that's in the mint family um, a mint or a member of the mint family. So plants in the mint family, also known as Lamiaceae family, um, are technically they, they've got a flower which has kind of got a uh, an upper and a lower lip and a sort of a tube shape that in various shapes, forms and colours and sizes. Uh, quite a lot of them have a kind of a quite a square stem, um, noticeable to the touch. Um, many of them are like mint um, used in our cooking. So sage and basil and rosemary and oregano and um, sage, lots and lots and lots of different things. So they've got quite strong smelling leaves, which are often quite hairy. Um, quite often, nearly all the time, the leaves appear in opposite pairs, but then the next pair of leaves will be at 90 degrees up or down from that pair. Okay, so, so those are the kind of key, key features, really. So what you're saying then, Michael, is I've got a basil here and I've got two leaves that are across from each other here. And then you're saying the next ones down are opposite they're like 90 degrees is that what you absolutely. were saying absolutely and then i happen to have some sage right here okay. and it's exactly that same thing oh yes so that you've got these pairs of leaves getting smaller towards the top but they are opposites and then as perfect 90 degrees and it's in def definitely hairy leaves and definitely a square stem so yeah that's and great smell. So if i'm yeah. out walking I could look for that and I could feel the stem. And if it's got sort of a, a ridge that it's not a nice round stem, it's got kind of edges to it. It's sort of a squared stem. And then you're saying most of them have, so if I pinch one leaf, most of them will have some kind of a strong smell? Pretty much, yeah. Nearly all the time, quite a nice smell, but not always. And the, the, so when you're speaking about the flowers, I've got lavender growing in my backyard and I notice also in the spring rosemary. So those are in the mint family, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and those are really small flowers often, is that true? You probably need a hand lens or a magnifying glass to see those ones really, because close up, because they are really, really small. When you're keeping a nature journal, it's always good to practice making careful observations and slowing down. And one of the things you can do when you're doing that is take just a single leaf and look very closely. You may remember we did that in a previous video. So here's an example. In a previous video, we looked at contour drawing and you really had to look carefully at the leaf and at the edges of the leaf. This was a blind contour drawing. We did a continuous contour drawing and then we did a contour drawing and we filled in the very details of the leaves as well. Now in our nature journals, I would suggest that you try doing a compare contrast drawing 
looking really closely at two different leaves. In this case, these are both herbs. They're both in the mint family. One is mint and the other is basil. And you can take just one leaf, one leaf of mint, one leaf of basil, and make a careful drawing. In addition to the drawing, you're going to want to do a compare contrast observations. So to do a compare and contrast, we're going to think about making careful observations. So think about what you see, what do you smell, and what do you feel. Always be careful with touching new plants. Some are prickly. We know we're okay with mint and basil because those are plants that we use in our cooking and we grow. So I don't have to worry. So let's start with mint. What do you see? So I'm going to pick a mint leaf. Here we have a mint leaf. I drew one earlier. And what do I see? Well, I see that it's a, a very bright, darker green. So I've written, I notice the leaf is a bright, dark green. It has sharp edges on the margin of the leaf. So the next thing is to observe what do I smell. And to do that, I can pinch or crush or twist the leaf. You don't want to do this on a lot of leaves, but you can do it on a single one. And then smell. And this one is easy. It's one of the main smells. It's minty. The last thing is, what do you feel? So I already crushed the leaf, but this time I'm going to be slower and more careful. And I'm going to feel it. And I can feel that it has ridges and it's rough on the underside. It's bumpy. The underside of the leaf feels rough and bumpy. Now we're going to compare and contrast the basil. So what do I see? I ask myself. So I wrote, I notice the basil leaf is a bright light green. It is wider than the mint leaf. It has smooth edges. Now I need to think about what do I smell? I wrote, the leaf smells strong, sweet, and peppery. Now I'm going to think about what do you feel? I wrote that the leaf feels smooth and soft. I know there's so many different kinds of members of the mint family that we can grow and different people have different tastes. I mean, I know in my own family, you know, and I know from working with kids every spring, we talk about the kinds of things that people like to eat in their family, because I always say, if we're going to grow a bunch of herbs and you're going to take some home, make sure you're taking some that you think your family will like. Some people love putting mint in iced tea. Some people don't like the taste of mint or the smell of mint at all. So I was just wondering, can we go over just a few of the different kinds of herbs that are in the mint family that you could grow easily? I, I mean, I, I have to have quite a lot of these in my garden because I love the flavor of them. And I think, I mean, such as sage, which I'm holding up here, um, these are a few things that I just snipped, um, snipped earlier today. Um, I find sage really, really good for all sorts of things, for, even for desserts, for um, kind of boosting the immune system if I'm feeling like the beginning of a cold. I use it for leaf printing as well. That's one of the activities I featured in my book, beautiful for leaf printing uh, with ink. But other ones that I grow that I find really easy to grow are various types of mint. And there are loads of types of mint. There's something called pineapple mint. There's uh, peppermint, there's spearmint. There are loads of different varieties and species of mint and they grow incredibly easily. Marjoram, I've, I've got some marjoram flowering in my garden at the moment and we've got bumblebees, honeybees and butterflies on it, which brings me joy 
because I know I can use this in salads in my own cooking, but I know that I'm benefiting others because they're, they're, they're drinking the nectar. It's been quite dry recently at the moment. Um, so I've just watered that margarine because I know that will make the, the nectar more delicious and sweeter and more attractive. So therefore I get more pleasure because I can see more bees and butterflies and take photos of them and, and enjoy them. Lemon balm or melissa is a really, really nice one as well. Very okay. easy to grow. It looks a bit like a stingy nettle in its leaves, but it's not. Um, another one that um, looks like a stingy nettle has got nettle in the name is called um, white dead nettle, which actually is called lamium, which is what the family's named after, um, the lamiaceae. Lamium, I've not, you, it's used as a herbal medicine, but it's not one we really use for cooking, but it does look like a stingy nettle. And that's a whole evolutionary thing to um, make her, land herbivores think it's a stingy nettle. So that's mimicry, which is quite clever. Um, thyme is fantastic um, flavor. Rosemary is easy to grow, um, and um, oregano as well. Those and and yeah, and lavender is just a beauty, beautiful and relaxing to kind of make things out of. And all of these are pretty easy to grow. They're all really easy to grow. That's great. So stay tuned for some more videos, not only about the mint family, Lemiaceae, but some more videos about nature journals and growing plants.